If mm -hmm. I asked you what you thought about Australian wine, you might answer that it's all about Shiraz and Chardonnay. Sunshine in a glass, high octane red wines from gnarly old vines. And for the most part, you'd be right but you'd also be wrong too. And I wanna share with you eight Aussie wines in no particular order that you should search out and try. You see, Australian wine has been going through an identity crisis in the last decade or so. The crisis we kinda of had to have to help us realize what we really wanted to say in the wines we craft. We've seen the rise of natural wine, climate appropriate varieties, the hottest vintages on record and the wettest vintages on record. And all of this is really pressuring us to change. And change we have. Never before has Australian wine been so vibrant, playful and fun. First up is Sven Joschke's Sangiovese. Burst onto the scene a couple of years ago with an initial release that was mind bendingly good. But none impressed us more than his Sangiovese. It perfectly captures the essence of the variety while delivering subtleness to the typical rustic tannins that Sangiovese is known for. And the primary fruited nose is very alluring. Definitely a producer to watch. Next is Luke Lambert's Nebbiolo. Now, being a total another Neb head, I do find it remarkably difficult to find delicious Nebbiolo outside of Italy. It just hasn't translated as well as, say, Pinot Noir evidently has out of its home turf. But Luke seems to have the Midas touch here, and with some compelling wines that lay any doubts that Nebbiolo has a future in our sunburnt country. Highly recommended. Jumping to something a little more classical that surprised us recently, Josh Cooper's Shays Flat Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, it takes some guts as a small young producer to look Cabernet in the eye and go, you gotta change, buddy. But Josh's take on Cabernet is in the class of fine Bordeaux, but still retaining some remarkable primary fruit character. Evidently, he's got some natural talent here, and we get excited every single vintage to see how he's approaching the variety. Keeping with the classics, another producer that's changing our perspective is Callum Powell from Agricola Vintners. This fella is some serious pedigree, having grown up around his parents and their little startup called Torbreck, which eventually took the world by storm. Now Callum is making his own mark, finding finesse where others in the Barossa seem to have overlooked it. Iron fist and velvet glove is the oft used phrase here, but think more velvet than iron uh, in his Flaxman Valley Shiraz. Well worth the money to see Shiraz anew. Next up is an all-time favorite of ours, Alex Shiraz Fiano. Now, our own bias aside, this is the variety you want to be keeping an eye out for from Australia. Australia is very quickly making its own Venice mark on the world with it, and now it's hitting some serious momentum with qualities such as Shiraz, not Syrah, but Shiraz, one of the first winemakers to properly champion the variety with his time at Coriol. This is being, the, I guess, the perfect way to explore what Australia is putting forward as the next big white wine. Now to a white wine that's already big, but being drastically reinvented in Australia is Chardonnay. And few have balanced in the delicate touch like Gareth Belton from Gentlefolk. He burst on the scene in 2012 with a cracking release of wines and has since developed a fine-tuned approach to the variety that I personally find hits its peak in his single vineyard scary gully Chardonnay. From grapes nearly 600 meters in elevation, it's a brittle, refreshing little number that kind of resembles Grand Cru Chablis. Now, no mention of Chardonnay should be without Pinot Noir, so we should delve to Tasmania, where one of Australia's dark horses of wine plies his craft, Peter Dredge of Dr. Edge, his winemaking alter ego. His Tasmanian Pinot Noir will have you scratching your head as to how he can mimic Burgundy for a fraction of the price. Definitely at the top of my list for fine Australian Pinot Noir. And finally, one out of way left field, actually really, really left, if left is west. From Western Australia, a young winemaker with remarkable pedigree is doing marvelous things with Portuguese varieties. It's LAS, Las Vinos Pirate Blend, a Tariga dominant blend that captures the lifted floral aromatics of the variety without sacrificing the svelte tannins and generous fleshy mid palate weight. A remarkable example of where Australia could go if more climate appropriate varieties are planted. And that about rounds out the eight. I hope you managed to find a few new producers or perhaps were surprised at some of my choices. Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed it, a thumbs up goes a long way and a subscribe goes even further. Have a good one.